I am up and running. That, of course, means I am here for you right now. Which is awesome. Now, I say I'm going to be on at 10, but I tend to be on a little bit early because I always think it's better to be early than to be late. So, welcome. Welcome, welcome, everybody. At the moment, I am just sort of waiting for 10 o'clock to roll around before I actively get started. But today is Art Stream Day, which means, of course, that I am doing art. Mostly on the Procreate because I don't have a table yet. But when I get a table, I will be doing physical art as well, which is going to be fun. Uh, we got two minutes to go, so I guess I'll talk sort of about my plan today. Um, I was going to work on doing some color work. I wanted to work in pastels and I only have one character that fits that and their name is Darmuel. Uh, so my darling is going to get some art today. I sort of drew a little bit of a sketch yesterday so this is going to be me inking and coloring and procreate because that's fun. But it also means you guys get to see my PNG tuber moving again. For those of you who weren't here last time, like you, Duck. Uh, what else? What else? Other than that, everybody, please be nice. You're going to maybe notice my, uh, I got new headphones, so my, everything is nicer. It's very nice. These headphones are really nice, but. I think it's about time to get started. Let's get into it, shall we? So it's me. I am ready to get started. So, first things first. Let's make a new canvas so that I can start getting right into it. Oop. <laughs> of course, I immediately back out. Uh, let's take a photo. Because it's time to do angel works. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Duck is going to mess with me. That's going to be terrible. I do not love an audience interaction. Oh no, I'm so afraid. <laughs> so, yes. We are going to go ahead and resize this a little bit so that I can get it to the place that I want it to be. Basically, I'm making this a little bit big so that I can add more detail to the wings on the back that I didn't have. <laughs> yes, so. It's time to do art. The best time. Um, so. Thank you very much, stealthy void person. I need to fix this for a second. So, what? Mainly because I noticed that I'm not as reactive as I should be. Now I am as reactive as I should be. So, for Darmul, I have to go and get my file for them as well. So, let's go get that. Mainly just for the colors, which 
means you guys get to see my terrible naming schemes or best naming schemes. You get to decide that, I guess. There we are. And you, I think. Yes. The tiny, tiny sprite that I bought a long time ago. So that's more or less their true form. And then I'm doing a more humanoid version because they are an angel of creature comforts and comfort often means being on people's levels. <laughs> But this is where I'm going to be picking my colors from. I'm still glad I got this. It makes me happy even now. <laughs> so, first things first. Let's... Mm, let's pick a line to use as the outline color. Doop -a -doo, doop -a -doop -a -doo. Either way, it shouldn't have been that big. I don't want it to accidentally get hurt. Let's go with that one. And then we turn down the opacity on this nice sketch that I did. We go into my inking. We make sure that the line is the thickness that you want. Yes. And then I'm just going to start inking probably with the hair because I love doing hair. Hair is, especially fluffy hair, is like the best, the best comfort drawing thing for me. Super easy to do. Just constantly swoops and foofs and all those other good onomatopoeias. And you don't have to follow your lines that you drew as sketch layer. In fact, if you're just doing fluffy stuff like this, I highly encourage you to switch it up because you'll get better fluffiness the second time around following your lines with a more free hand than you will if you just try and trace every line that you did initially. Or at least that's what I've found for me. Is you get fluffier lines. The more relaxed you are. Didn't like that one. Nope, nope, nope. I just like that. Keep the eyes as clear as possible. Even though there's so many of them. There's so many of them. But that's what you get. When you're a biblically accurate angel. You have to have those weird like. 45. <laughs> big glasses with the 80, 80 lenses on them that would be hilarious to me if somebody had a character that had that was a biblically accurate angel but they had to have glasses so they had like <laughs> gigantic consistent ginormous frames all over the place because there's nothing else for them to do because it's all of their eyes it's not just one of the set of their eyes it's every pair of their eyes is <laughs> poor guy <laughs> but like i said right now i'm gonna do the hair because hair is fun as you can see, there is a lot of hair just for the character in general. And it also is going to be involving me cutting off areas that are wings because I'm going to do a different outline color for them. That way I can keep track of 
where I'm putting the correct colors, even though the color is white. I'm going to be using chromatic tones on it, hopefully. And I want to make sure they're separate so that I can make it look nice. And different. They are an angel after all. I'm not too worried about following the clothing outline because the clothes are going to be on a separate layer and that layer is going to be on top of everything. So theoretically, I could do that with the wings too. Eh, yeah, I probably should do that. That way I can just have everything on a separate layer. And I get to draw out the full hair, which is fun. The only thing that should be masked off is the skin tone zone. And even then, even then it could be, eh, you know what, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to let it be wild and free. The reason why they have this is because it's bedhead. They've got the world's biggest case of bedhead. And they're an angel. <laughs> angel of creature comforts. Alright, so that's good. Now we add the detailing lines. Stuff that sort of echoes the curves of the bangs that you want to do. Add more spots for fluffiness. You can do this in any visible area that you're going to use. Or you can just do it and then hide it all invisible-like on the other layers. It's interesting doing art like this, mainly because it's hard to figure out where you want to talk about things, but at the same time, you just want to do the art and let the work speak for itself, but it's more fun for the audience when they get involved, or at least that's what I've heard, or at least what I think. Which is why I'm excited for the stand as well, because it means that um means that I don't just have to do digital art, I can do physical art as well, where you'll see me like yoinking out colored pencils and specifically India ink markers, because I like those better than alcohol ink markers for some reason, probably color quality. But it means I can also play board games, which is one of my favorite things. Well, not really, like, all the time thing, but I like doing it with friends, board games. I especially like doing it with people who, who have never played the game before. And... My family has weird tastes in games, so what we get in games is stuff like Dragonology, the board game, uh, Chrononauts, a card game where you're a time traveler trying to get back home, uh, which is very fun, and we have two sets of that so that we can build a gigantic timeline instead of the regular one but there's even more that we don't have with that particular game that would add even more to your timeline 
but my favorite character to play is <laughs> the guy who runs the the crab shack at the end of time to which you're supposed to purposefully try and break the timeline because that's where you live. You live at the broken end of the timeline. Yes. Uh, Dragonology, the board game, is you're trying to collect... Um, information on dragons so that you can go and tame them in their home regions and there's trains and planes and it's a good time there's blimps so it's sort of steampunky as well as dragons because it's based off of the dragonology uh book series and by that i of course mean the fiction and the the other stuff We we here in this house hold with me have the uh, our our home rules are always uh, let's be nice to each other. <laughs> so like in dragonology, one of our home rules quite literally is if somebody tames a dragon and you have a card for that dragon, you give them that card, especially if it's their favorite type of dragon. It's it's very nice. We don't use like the swoop cards or the steal the dragon cards that are included in the game. We just don't like that. We prefer our games to be a little bit more cooperative. But um you're trying to basically earn the dragon's respect enough to go to Dragon Island. Yes, exactly, Iron Duck. Uh, but they have like little mini figurines that are plasticky. The only character that we don't like to play as, yes, the Dragon D20. I forgot about that. That's the game that has a D20 and you're rolling the D20. And the 20, the critical success, is a dragon's eye, which is really cool to look at. And it's really fun when you roll that. So, like, <laughs> good dice. But we just recently got our Kickstarter version of um, Flamecraft, which you've probably seen the art for everywhere. It's the little dragons that work in shops as blacksmiths or potion makers or jewelry makers. This game is about being basically the manager of all of those types of dragons and trying to make the town the best town it could possibly be for both dragons and humans and you're trying the the goal of the game the success factor of the game is how much love did you earn at the end how much reputation did you earn how good of a reputation do you have which is very fun and we got the special ones which means we have the kickstarter exclusive cards and shops but we also have uh, the little pink celebration dragons which is what i usually play as because they're they're just cute like me <laughs> Ah, right, I forgot to introduce myself. I am Star Sailor 7. I go by Star or 7 or whatever you guys want to call me. And I chit chat and do art and other things. All right, let's see where we went wrong. Okay, so there's a whole line there that I just didn't do for some reason. I like that. That's good. And we do this. And it's still wrong. At least over here. Where is it? 
you. Hey. Normally I don't get the the ceiling right on the first time. <laughs> Yay! Hello, Coop. Glad to see you made it. Glad to see you made it in one piece. So yeah, once I get my table and I can set up my um overhead stand which I'd need to do just for um birds completely gone just for a board game setting or for physical traditional drawing setting the best thing would be for me to um have that table before I did streams like that but that table should be getting here soon so we'll see how long that takes in reality so there we go with the hair at least for that and then we could do the flowers next or we could do yeah I want to do the flowers next the flowers cute flowers also mean I get to be Super saturated. Yeah. Just, oops. <laughs> anyway. Like I was saying, those are some of our favorite board games here in this particular household. So much so that we bought them. Or kickstarted them, as the case may be. What are some of you guys' favorite board games? I want to know if there's any that I've missed over the years because there's probably been a lot like I didn't know about. Uh, Chrononauts until... Ah, yes, the world's greatest and oldest friendship ruiner, Monopoly. Where you get to pretend to be a railroad tycoon in the... ...1900s. <laughs> mm. I mean, you're absolutely correct, and most people suck at setting boundaries, but... World's greatest friendship ruiner. <laughs> I stand by that statement. I suppose that's also fair, although I've never had that. Yes, I emote. I'm trying to find the right one. So I guess I'm scrolling through my emote wheel. Yeah, there we go. I worked really hard to just make it so that I could <laughs> I like Coop and Yu's reactions. Coop was like, oh wait, you emote? And then you're like, oh, there's emotes! <laughs> Love that for me. <laughs> I forgot that there are actual colors in here that I can use. I have up to eight emotes right now, all in various stages. My favorites are five and one and six, but five is one of my favorites because I'm, yeah! I have them hotkeyed to different numbers. Eventually, I'll have to change that, but. <laughs> if 
But yes, board games are the best. Especially when you play them with people who have never played said board games before in their life. And you're just sitting there like, I know all the rules and you know none of them. And yet, and yet. So, my personal favorite uh, is actually Chrononauts here at the household. Uh, I'm a sucker for all things time travel, in case anybody's not been able to figure that out. I love me a good time travel board game story. You tell me there's time travel, I'm there. I love it. And Chrononauts is fun because it's... It's got references to every sort of thing that has ever had time travel in it. So there's, like, your Marty McFly's. There's your... My personal favorite was when I got the one that was based off of Star Trek. And no, I'm not kidding. I was Captain Somebody off of a starship who had accidentally looped gravity and thrown themselves into the past. I I was doing the Shatner pauses and everything. It was awesome. Oop, wrong one. I need this color. And then I can do the leaves, too. But, yes. Love me a good time travel game. But most of them don't necessarily take into the account of... Chrononauts is fun because it takes into account all of these, like, little things. Like, there are events that you can't change. You just can't. That's... Part of the game, they're called linchpin events. And they're just events in history that you can't change. But there are also things that you can change that have a bigger impact than you'd think they would. Like... A lot of those are assassination attempts on people. You can either make them successful or unsuccessful as turning points in the game. And one of my favorites to flip for no good reason is um, the attempted assassination of uh, the assassination, actually, of the Beatles singer, I believe. I don't remember. John Lennon? Yeah, that one. But you can also, like, turn back for Martin Luther King Jr. and JFK so it's like everybody gets no assassination attempt but in the game that of course lets you access the timeline that gives you a Beatles album that doesn't actually exist <laughs> like their reunion album and you can either go home by changing your time stream to match what your character's timeline is affected by or by collecting things, including like things that shouldn't have existed, like the Beatles album or collecting forgeries of the Mona Lisa. It's very funny. And it's often, like, just play your, your game close to... It's a bluffing game on top of being a game about time travel. Which is really hard when, to do when you're laughing at this. <laughs> it can be. And especially the way we play it, which is like, Ah, uh, yes, we're going with the full-on timeline, by the way. We're going with the timeline that they say you shouldn't do. We're going with every single possible 
outcome on the board. No, we will not stop. It's it's really, really interesting. I'll see if I can show you guys a card here because the character cards are the best. But so are the missions. Like one of the missions is to bring back delicacies to this time travel dinner party. Like that's what you were hired to do. You were hired to bring food to a dinner party that's happening for time travelers. But they want you to get stuff from like timelines that don't exist. Like there's a um, woolly mammoth steak that they want you to get. There's cake from the time that Germany. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try and slow down. You're right. <laughs> I do tend to be spinning this thing very fast. <laughs> Nobody can see really what I'm doing if I go too fast. But. Yeah, that's the, that's the fun of the game. Is the absolute insanity that is time travelers trying to bluff and steal each other's objects because multiple objects are for multiple missions. So like there's the Mona Lisa that I was telling you about. There's an excellent forgery, a poor quality forgery. Um, and the actual Mona Lisa in the game <laughs> One of the missions requires you to have the best copy of the Fo Mona Lisa, which means that if none of the other Mona Lisas are in play, the terrible copy of the Mona Lisa, which is like on ruled notebook paper and has a mustache, means you succeeded in that mission. But it, if somebody else has the mission that they're trying to save or preserve art pieces from being stolen... They're also after the same good quality Mona Lisa that you are. So, like the highest quality Mona Lisa in the game. Which makes it incredibly difficult to, like, hold on to objects. Especially since you're not supposed to place them face down. You're supposed to leave them up so that everybody can see what you have. But this does not refer to the gadgets because you can have gadgets as well you're not all, you can show those if you want to but they're not like the objects that you have to say that you have there's also some theoretical objects in the game that are like dang i wish i could time travel and bring those actually here including um the game calls it a cure for cancer but it's it looks like a generic bottle of pills, which I think is the joke, because it looks like it's become so commonplace that it's it's just a thing you can go pick up the pills at the drugstore. But it's a very fun game and it is very chaotic, especially when you're trying to No, I need that linchpin flipped this way. Come on did that for a reason I need this yeah well I need it this way for this but you're not really saying what you actually need it for it's it's very funny and the fact is it the fact remains that there is the distinct possibility it's happened to us when we've played it before that you can accidentally send your competitors home. Uh, this has happened to me and my sister. We sent our, our mother who was playing with us back to her timeline. 
by trying to get home ourselves. We were just playing quietly. We were just doing everything that we could do to get back home. And then she's like, hey, wait a second. Oh, wait, I'm back home. <laughs> and we went, what? No. <laughs> it's one of my favorite games. But then again, all the games that we have in the house that are board games, we kept for a reason. So all of them have their own unique charms. And things that make people happy. But yeah, we seem to only really collect odd board games. A board game that I'd like to have, that I don't have, that I played like three times, um, is called... Goodness gracious, I can't remember the full title, but it's like the horror at the house on the hill. It's a sort of spooky board game, but not really. It's an exploration game, and I can go over the rules fairly quickly because it's interesting in the way that it executes its horror movie tropes, which basically is you and your friends are exploring an old haunted mansion. You get locked in immediately upon entering. When you're exploring, you'll come across scary rooms. This will require you to make a sanity check. If you fail your sanity check, the timer on the house itself goes up by one or by however many you've spun. Theoretically, this first part of the game can last a really long time. But the next part is where it gets funny because, oh, it's betrayal at the house on the hill. <laughs> is because this next part is the betrayal. One of your members, somebody rolls and it goes randomly to whoever... Is the person. They are going to. Get a. Scenario. Which is the interesting thing. They get a little scenario. In a book. And the scenario tells them. What sort of horror movie monster. They've become basically. Most of them have remained. Human-esque. But it's suddenly like, oh yeah, and you remember you were a vampire or whatever. And then said person is hunting you through the house as all of the rest of you try to escape. It's really... It's really silly for the fact that it's supposed to be a horror game. Because... Me who cannot stand horror thought it was fun enough to play multiple times. Because of the aspect. I never got to be the bad guy, though. I was upset by that. None of the times that it rolled, it let me be the bad guy. I'm just too good, I guess. Assigned too good by board game. Naturally a good person. But I want it to be evil. Let me be evil a little bit, please, as a treat, please. No, no evil for me. But, yeah, it's, it plays with all of the scary house tropes in a way that isn't really scary anymore. But it also still feels like one of those horror movies that you could just play. But then again, I'm also just a fan of collecting weird movies and TV shows. And Yes, now I have to ask this. What's the weirdest TV show you guys have ever watched? Like, the strangest. 
Like you didn't really necessarily know what was going on, but you enjoyed it. Or a show that was just just weird. Write in your answers now. <laughs> well, yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Go on with the... <laughs> yeah. Yes, Miraculous Ladybug is a disappointment of writing, is what I would say. To think that person worked on Code Lyoko as well. He he designed the Catboy for Code Lyoko as well. I was not necessarily asking for, like, the disappointingest shows, but like this is very fun. Uh, Tower Prep was a Cartoon Network show that had kids developing superpowers and being thrown into a school like no other and wasn't really good. No. It started off with a plug for their um, MMO, <laughs> Fusion Fall. And no, I'm not joking. But it was actually rather interesting. Because the whole point of the show was these kids trying to escape the school. Why did their parents put them in the school? Did their parents put them in the school? Who's running this school? etc. It ran at the same time as a show called Unnatural History. Both of them were cancelled never to be seen again. Miraculous Ladybug. <laughs> um, is a Miraculous Ladybug. You, you kind of either love it or you hate it. If you hate it, I suggest you check out the, the fandom the fandom has some really cool like thought processes where they've fixed everything basically um as for what eclectic exclamations is talking about yeah culture shock is a thing and i have experienced it multiple times watching anime and stuff from china i have no idea what's going on at any given point during the show. Cinderella Chef specifically is an isekai of a chef who was a TV chef who got thrown into ancient China, but she liked to use ancient tools anyway. That, that's what she got famous for, was using ancient cooking tools to cook meals. So she gets thrown back in time and oh, look, her niche hobby, which is cooking with ancient tools, is now very useful. But you can only watch, like, the seventh season in English? None of the first seasons. Nope. You don't get to have any introduction on who the characters are, how she got here, what she's done. Nope. You just get... No, I haven't, Iron Duck. I don't really pay attention to the Miraculous Ladybug fandom. I'm, I'm only in the fandom. I don't necessarily watch the show anymore. Because 
of many of the reasons that you yourself outlined. <laughs> I've seen that it's like really, really like rendered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, personally, one of my favorite uh, fandom creations is the Bakery Enemy AU on Tumblr. I don't know if you've ever seen it, Iron Duck, but it's basically, what if Marinette and Adrian had never met as civilians? Oh, dang, I have to talk about Dragon Blade now. <laughs> Yeah, you have read it. Dragon Blade. Oh, God. <laughs> Give me a second to have my... Oh, God, that movie. Dragon Blade is a Jackie Chan movie. A Jackie Chan movie with John Cusack in it. A Jackie Chan movie with John Cusack in it about ancient China and has Romans in it. Dragon Blade is a movie. There's a lot in it. I... Horror flashbacks. <laughs> Not because it's a horror movie, but just because you don't understand anything ever in the movie. Ever. It just doesn't explain it. You're just sitting there like... <laughs> I love the movie, but it's so hard to explain. <laughs> you want to take a crack at it, Fairy? Go ahead. But I don't know how to explain it. Um... I was actually thinking about the weird television shows that me and my family have watched. Yeah, that's, that's sort of what I was trying to get at. It's a really good movie for both, like, the martial arts aspects of it, and it's also really weird because it's 100% a folklore that we don't have in America. That's what Dragon Blade is. I think we watched it originally on Netflix, but I don't know if it's still there. Maybe one day. We have the movie because we like it so much, even though we're constantly confused. <laughs> but... Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay. I was actually... My, my initial question was more accurately trying to ask, um, does anybody have any weird TV that they really, really liked? They just are like, yeah, watch this. This is a really good show. I promise. Please. I promise it's a good show. Please, please, please believe me. It's a good show. I promise. Uh, because I have several recommendations in that area. Uh, Starting with Warehouse 13 and The Librarians. Yeah, The New Legends of Monkey on Netflix. Also one of those. It's, it's really weird. Really, really weird. But it's good, I promise. I promise it's good. Please just watch it. It's good, I promise. <laughs> Yeah. The librarians, just for a quick summary, because I love doing these little summaries. Um, the Metropolitan New York Public Library has a librarian, head librarian, 
But he's not normal. He shouldn't be normal. Because the man goes out on adventures to collect mystical artifacts for the library itself. So that the magic doesn't go into wrong hands. And I mean that quite literally. It's got several movies and a TV show. The TV show is where we started. We eventually watched all the movies. The movies are cheesy and meh, but think it's natural, natural, blah, 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 blah. national treasure, except instead of Nick Cage and no magic, it's an actor you've probably never heard of before, and everything is magic. People are magic. I mean, literally one of the episodes is there's a storybook that is turning people into characters from fairy tales. Like Big Bad Wolf and the female character, whose name is Cassandra, she has red hair, she eventually becomes a mage of some variety or another is Prince Charming. Like, literally. She becomes the archetype Prince Charming. Alright, see you, Deck. Have a good one. It's really, really good. And also really weird. If you've watched Leverage, which is another TV show that I want to watch because... Who doesn't want, like, Robin Hood thieves take out big corporations through trickery and thievery and fun stuff like that? I mean, I'm pretty sure I've already watched, like, six shows of that nature. And I will watch every show because that is a delicious archetype for me. But, yes, um... I was talking about Elliot from that show is a librarian in The Librarians. <laughs> His name is Stone, like Victor Stone. And he's very knowledgeable about the arts and about a lot of stuff, but he downplays his intelligence because his family made him feel bad for it. But yes, I highly recommend both of those shows. Warehouse 13 is similar to The Librarians. It was a sci-fi original show for the time that it ran. And it is collecting objects You'll see I have a running theme at the moment, at least. They are collecting objects that could cause problems. Or that are causing problems. Uh, I'd have to give an example. They're really, really odd. Because the objects themselves are fairly mundane. That's the whole point of it. Um... Let's see, let's see. The best example that I can come up with off the top of my head 
is um goodness gracious can't really think of any off the top of my head at the moment none that really encapsulate the whole like theme and purpose that I can explain readily Um, Yeah, okay, there we go. I guess I just pushed the button, which put me on mute. <laughs> so, an object of... From Warehouse 13 that expands upon the universe? I guess I would have to say... The best example of it hmm yeah I can go with that one that one's that one doesn't show up for a whole lot of time but it does show up there is a an explanation that is given it's said that an artifact, which is what they're collecting, I'm not doing the whole arm, is a meeting of a person, a place, and a moment. As in, a moment in history is part of the connection. Alright, see you later. Have fun! Um... The example that I'm thinking of is not one of the more pleasant artifacts. Just because of the histor historic moment that it was a part of. Um, and that is a doorknob from the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory. It's an object that if you hold it, you feel burning. That's what the artifact is for because the triangle shirtwaist fire and the fact that people were locked in there. It's not all like that. There's a bunch like Mozart's paintings, not Mozart, blah, 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 blah. There's a Van Gogh painting that actually breathes life into things. Like it, it's a painting of a windy day that will blow you away because it's a wind artifact. But there's a bunch of other stuff. So it's sort of got this vague feeling to it that I would say isn't necessarily unease, but it's also not necessarily 
like comforting at the same time that it's comforting. There's a whole bunch of artifacts and they all cover the range of helpful, hurtful, healing, but everything comes at a price. There's always a downside to using an artifact. Or at least, there's almost always a downside to using an artifact. Uh, but those are often like my favorite parts of the show the artifacts themselves because they're just like mundane objects that's that's what they look like they look like mundane objects that you could find anywhere just lying around some of them have historical context so they're in like museums and stuff like there's a Apparently one of Jimi Hendrix's guitars in that universe uh, will throw lightning if it's not tuned correctly. Not for any other reason than it wants to. <laughs> Which is the fun part. The artifacts themselves have a sort of sentience. They're, they are, in fact, characters involved in the story. Which is fun. I would almost say that the artifacts themselves are the stars of the show. Just because there's so much to do with them. But that isn't always the case. Some of the characters themselves are, like, really fun as well. Like, Mrs. Fredericks is one of the more interesting characters from the show. And I only say that because she herself is, like, ancient to an unfathomable degree. And we only learn that when she starts looking for a successor. We're doing good so far. We're doing good so far. That's good. Let's see. Probably those next, but that's that's after. So. So we're doing good. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. But that's one of my favorite, my personal favorite TV shows. Just because they knew they were ending in their last season. And they just went out with a complete and utter, like, insanity fest which is hilarious. They did a whole episode that's basically a spoof on telenovelas. And it's so very funny. Uh, purple. But that's the sort of, like, weird TV that I'm into. Is TV that doesn't necessarily, like, stop your misconceptions, but in fact plays on them to give you a little bit more of an interesting show. Because your theories might be correct, sort of, maybe a little bit, sort of. 
But how are you to know if you don't watch the show? Like, watch the show. I tried to get a lot of people into Warehouse 13 when it was still running because I personally found it interesting. Yeah, I love good action animated shows as well, but I'm also like one of the world's biggest fans of Power Rangers. So I love me a good black and white narrative. There are good guys, there are bad guys. Here are the good guys, here are the bad guys. But Power Rangers also does an excellent job of, yeah, but are they really the bad guys? Uh, it has some of the best ships of all time. And I'm not talking about the heroes. I'm talking about the villains. I mean, like, seriously, Rita and Zed from the original Power Rangers are married. They're happily married together. Like, quite literally happily married. She tried to brainwash him into being in love with her when they switched actresses. And when he was cured, when Lord Zed was cured of his brainwashing, he was like, no, shut up. Don't ruin this for me. I've wanted to marry her, obviously, for so long. Don't ruin this for me. And they just keep doing that with their background characters. And I'm like, that's so valid of you. That's so good. That's like the best thing ever. Mystic Force had a, another married couple, but it was a a hero and one of their villains. In fact, like, their coolest villain, whose name is Korag. It's just excellent stuff. Just all of the villains are apparently in loving relationships. If bad guys can be in love, so can you. <laughs> but I've always been a fan of those style of um, inclusivity shows. Because I also love... Captain Planet. And that is a show that is nothing if not inclusive. Everybody is a different race, from a different country, having different opinions, and different powers. Of course, this is back when the USSR was still a thing, so... One of their characters is from there. <laughs> But she's a hero, not a bad guy, even though there's a bad guy also from the USSR. But literally, I love how on the nose Captain Planet was. There is, quite literally, uh, one of their villains is an American. <laughs> well, hey, it's like a 70s show. Whoopi Goldberg is Mother Nature. Like, Gaia, the spirit of the Earth. Like, Lamar Burton, I think, is Captain Planet himself. It's good. <laughs> it's a good show, I promise. My personal favorite thing is that one of their villains was quite literally a pig man who had a rat sidekick helping him. He's, well, yeah, fair. I don't do time periods. Time is not, I love time travel because I myself cannot tell time in passing at all. I don't know how much time has passed. Do you? It's probably been like two minutes. We can keep going. There's only like four minutes left, right? No, I am completely and utterly wrong on that. And I have always been. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of their villains was a pig man who had a rat as his helper. And he was the American villain. One of them. Technically, they also had literally a villain named Duke Nukem who was a man made of radioactive materials, and he never did really anything villainous. He was just scary. Because nuclear... Well, no, that's not loot and plunder, Cassie. Uh, 
Yeah, I believe his first name was actually Duke. He ran around shirtless in a Hawaiian like button up that was open in the middle and swim trunks. Man was an icon of fashion. Yes. He he himself was made of nuclear power. Yes, he is Duke Nukem. And all he was trying to do was to get radiation. I'm pretty sure he was an alien who got stranded on Earth. I'm pretty sure that that was supposed to be his story. I could not tell you if that's true or not, but that's my personal headcanon for him. He never did anything wrong. (laughs) Dude was just... Scary nuclear energy. Ooh, scary. (laughs) You know? (laughs) But there was literally a billionaire called Loot and Plunder. That was his actual name, and he liked to hunt animals for sport and for, like, their ivory and, you know, other terrible terrible things their enemies were always like on the nose but my favorite duo was the pig man and the rat man who were constantly hunting for oil and using oil and hurting people that way I'm guessing you looked it up but yes hoggish greedly And his helper, the tiny little rat man, quite literally, are absolutely ridiculous. Best duo. (laughs) I'm serious, it's awesome. Oh my god, his helper's name was Verminous Scum? I'm going to explode, their names are so funny. Oh god. <laughs> he literally oinks in the show, so like he is a pig man, but they didn't want to like give him too much fantasy features because they this is sort of a fantasy show. Sort of. <laughs> oh no, don't look at Evil Planet. No, no, Captain Pollution or whatever the heck his name was. They they made they made a mean version of Captain Planet. It's so dumb. So dumb. God, it's so dumb. <laughs> but yes. I love Captain Planet. It's one of my favorite shows because it teaches you to reduce, reuse, and recycle to save the planet because that's that's important. Because if you don't, Gaia will cry and be sad and die and it will all be all of our fault. But their theme song is amazing and you should go listen to it. It's super fun. Yeah, either that or he's been completely forgotten by time. I'm pretty sure nobody knows about him. And this is before the era of internet. I agree with you, Coop, but he may have not been capitalized on because this is... This is... Yeah, he's literally like a Tumblr sexy man. Like, absolutely, 100%. He fits into the category of wet, pathetic rat man. Statistically, that somebody is me, and I don't want to make fan art like that. (laughs) I've looked up Captain Planet on Tumblr. There's nothing. There's, like, nothing. (laughs) 
Uh, it's just like plus anima. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but has that person statistically shared it? Probably not. Not because they they don't want to, but they just haven't had the time or the energy or the willingness to try and explain themselves to the people on the internet. <laughs> you say that, but literally, he could become the next Tumblr sexy man. He falls into the category. He falls, like, directly into it. Him or Luton Plunder. Luton Plunder's supposed to be their sexy man, but... Man's not sexy. He's evil. <laughs> Yeah, he's a pathetic wet rat of a man, and that's like Tumblr's favorite thing. <laughs> Us four people on the stream going, yep, do you guys remember Captain Planet on our respective Tumblr's Pooper Cool does not even have one, just starts spamming an iron text or blogs, hey, vermin is scum. <laughs> Uh, we could do it we could be the change we want to see in the world <laughs> but do we want to see this change <laughs> uh, you guys are killing me this is so funny <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, where was I? All of his villains are really funny. The The funniest thing for me about Captain Planet's bad guys is the, the one from the USSR, because there is one. She's, like, wind-powered for some reason. I don't know why. She's, like, the most conscientious out of all of the villains, but she is. Uh, looks almost exactly like... It's probably because their USSR champion of <laughs> champion of recycling, aka Planeteer, which you can be one too, because saving our planet is the thing to do. Is a uh, wind. That's her element. That's what she gets to use magic ring wise. Because yeah, they get magic rings. This is how they summon Captain Planet with a whole song and chant it's awesome <laughs> but it looks exactly like her but older and evil that's always what I thought as a kid, that it's like, this is her mom. Oh, God. She's got to be so embarrassed by it that her mom is this evil wind scientist who's using her powers for evil. And, Mom, I just joined the planet. Are you seriously doing this just to keep an eye on me? Come on. Seriously. What is wrong with you? <laughs> it's... Just like one of those absolutely flabbergasting things to me, character design wise. Like, why would why would you mimic her design like that? But yeah, if you haven't ever heard the theme song for Captain Planet, go go listen to it. I'll be right here, waiting for you to come back and telling me how much of a banger it is because it's awesome. It's so. It's so much part of its time period, but at the same time, the song itself is so good.
And I totally forgot another weird show that I love, which just finished its second season over on Disney+. Plus. Please go watch The Mysterious Benedict Society. It's... So weird. And so worth watching. This is basically... Welcome to me promoing my favorite TV shows. I don't. I should get one. I should get some sort of patch. I should just like superimpose it over my face in my PNG tuber. <laughs> Be a planeteer! I'm a planeteer! Come on, chide me! <laughs> uh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, just be prepared for you to suddenly get like do you, are you okay? Do you want to be eco-friendly? Is that what this is? We can give you like tips on how to recycle better or no news about recycling. Is are you okay? Are you sure this is something that you're interested in? But isn't it such a good theme song? It's such a fun song. Earth, fire, wind, water, heart, go planet! <laughs> By your powers combined, I am Captain Planet! I, I can hear the theme song in my own head even without playing it. Because I've listened to it so much, I own the first season on DVD. Guess what the box is? Recyclable cardboard. <laughs> exactly what you thought it would be. Exactly what you thought it would be. Exactly what everybody thought it would be. Recyclable cardboard. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I used to watch that on Boomerang, back when we had cable TV. Yes, it's a very 80s theme song, and it's worth every second to listen to it, because it's so fun. <laughs> it deserves more recognition than what it gets. It's a very good superhero show. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I would watch on Boomerang when it came on. Because I loved it. It was hilarious because they would do like a marathon for Arbor Day of Captain Planet episodes. But I don't have all the seasons. I only just have the first one because the first one is the only one that they're selling. And I don't know if there's more seasons than this just one. But they still sell Planeteer t-shirts and stuff. Because you can be at Planeteer too. I love that they just, like, name drop one of their villains, but only one of their villains. Yeah, loot and plunder. Don't be like him, kids. He's a bad guy. Yeah, and of course, now that we're going down the nostalgia lane, we have to talk about JetX and all of the shows on JetX. Because JetX, man... That's where, that's where I saw so many things. Not even in like, it was, JetX is where we watched Power Rangers. JetX is also home to about a dozen or so 
initial tries for America to like anime. Which included, like, Naruto at the time. Because everybody will like Naruto, right? Uh, I still don't. Not because I don't think it's got, like, good narrative or anything, but... Friendship trauma is a part of that for me now. One of my people I liked as a friend and a person. Yeah, I haven't watched it in a while, but let's be honest. Does it really sound like something we'd watch, Cassie? No, no, no. Wrong words. <clears throat> No, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, my first anime, though, that I can remember watching is Avatar The Last Airbender. Because it is one, by all accounts, here in my home, where I can state my opinions, anime, Avatar The Last Airbender is... An anime. 100%. 100%. It's an anime. The second anime that I can remember watching is be then more people will be watching me. Is this better? Yeah, there we go. Once again, I keep using the the wrong the wrong button. Keep touching the button on my new headphones that apparently will mute me or turn off my microphone. Which is interesting. That would be why I was looking weird, because I didn't have the line work on. Let's see, I got a couple more things to do. Limbs-wise, clothing-wise. Then I can work on the wings and stuff, which will be fun. Especially since it's similar colors, but I'm going to be doing angel colors in a different angel way. <laughs> Gotta shift positions, because... Sitting still for too long is hard. Luckily, I have this plugged into my computer, so the time that I've been struggling with all the time is now a thing of the past. Now I don't have to worry about... stuff like... The the iPad running out of battery.
But yeah. So I totally understand the love of comic book shows. That is my weird comic book show. I'm pretty sure it did have a comic book actually as well. If it didn't, I'm also not surprised by that. It's kind of on the nose and basically very pointedly remarking about corporations and people who aren't taking care of the planet. So. I can see why it would be not very fundable either if it does not have a comic book. Either way, I love it. Uh, but yes, we were talking about JetX. JetX was, I don't necessarily remember. I think it was Disney. I think this was, yeah, Disney trying their hand at anime in like early 2000s and stuff because that's when I grew up. But my personal... I always thought that the shows on JetX were, were far more interesting than what was regularly on animated TV because they had really weird plot lines and stories. So, like I said, yeah, there was definitely Naruto. But there was also stuff like Super Robot Monkey Team, Hyperforce, Go! And... Yeah, we only ever managed to get to catch a couple of episodes of that, but it was like half mecha anime, half American cartoon. And there were a bunch that followed the same style after it ended. It sort of reminds me of Mega Man, but except the robots are monkeys. Some of them get turned evil at some point. I honestly don't remember a whole lot about it. I was mostly there for Power Rangers. Specifically, the Disney Channel era of Power Rangers, which I think get a bad rap. Most people don't tend to like those very much for some reason, but I think they get a bad rap. They have fun stories, and they have an intercontinuity that modern Power Rangers wishes they had. They've sort of tried to take into that effect but they just don't do it as well in my opinion those are the ones like SPD, Mystic Force Dino Thunder Ninja Storm Jungle Fury those are really good like Power Rangers, those are really good. I promise, they're really good. They at least make me really happy, so. I'll vouch for them every day of the week. But then, of course, once you're, once that got shut down, because it did, because it wasn't making enough money, so they stopped using the label JetX and they just sort of stopped doing that at all. Um, yeah, it makes me sad that I never went to Disney during that era of stuff because apparently you could, you could see the Power Rangers in the Disney parade. <laughs> And I was like, no, come on, that would have been really sick. No. For young me, that would have been the best. But 
alas, it was not to be. But yes, there are others that were involved on there, like Puka. Puka was basically a very silly little show about a girl trying to get her crush to be nice to her and not run away from her. But they're all ninjas, so they were all like insanely tricked out, capable of doing really cool feats of physicality and lots of parkour it was it was a fun watch but they were only like 15 minutes each still a good watch though all right close down <gasps> I'm guessing you have some vague awareness of it, huh, Coop? Either way. It's a fun show. With that, led to me wanting to watch more anime just in general, because I liked it. Um, which, for the longest time, you just couldn't find any anime. Avatar scratched the itch for a while. We came in initially when it was airing in, like, Fire, I think, maybe a little bit earlier than that in Earth. But we were there for the for the grand finale, it was hype. But at the same time, I'm I'm of the opinion that I'm of the unpopular opinion that I didn't really like Cora at all. I thought she was not a good successor for Aang. I did not like her show. But that's my opinion on that. Uh, I also didn't like how they did Aang dirty in that show. So, like, he's going to be one of the best dads ever. You can't tell me that he wouldn't. I don't believe you. <laughs> but, yes. Different talking. For me, the next anime that I remember watching, and this is just remember, is was a really weird anime that I was pretty sure we'd, me and my family had watched on Netflix. Uh, and it's really weird. It really, really was exceptionally weird. And it was called This Ugly Yet Beautiful World. And it basically talked about extinction events, had a boy turn into some sort of primal fighting force to, to try and fight off the actual embodiment of an extinction level event. He was green. He was like, it was really weird, but I enjoyed it immensely for the fact that I did not have any other anime to watch.
But that started the the I want to watch more anime hunt again for me. Which then led us to the mainstream beginnings of Crunchyroll, which was Fairy Tale. And I got really, really into Fairy Tale. Really, really, really into Fairy Tale. With my favorite being Natsu. I love a good character who is intensely underrated or played off as a joke but then turns out to be one of the more powerful characters of a series that is my favorite trope that and the blonde dumbass trope I have a whole collection of blonde boys because it is one of my favorite tropes so very much one of my favorite tropes but it was through f fairy tale through Crunchyroll and all of that, that I started to find more more anime to watch. It took a long time. At one point, Crunchyroll had a a channel on cable TV. I believe that I only found as it was uh being dissolved. Oh yeah, it was it was Funimation, my bad. Funimation was the the new hotness for anime at the time that we were getting into. My bad. This showed up even to our like podunk towns one library festival that yeah we watched all the dubbed versions not no subtitles we we weren't we weren't cultured like we are today <laughs> but yeah it was fairy tale next that caught my attention and then and for a while it was only fairy tale we found their channel right as it was being basically taken down like they were no longer going to be a channel on cable tv anymore <laughs> So we got to watch some weird, like, promos for shows that we would not be able to find for another, like, ten years. But that's also when I started getting back into, like, regular TV animation again. Which is around the time when Discovery Kids was becoming the hub. Which is where I got another taste of, wow, what is Japan on? Why are they making this an anime? If you've ever read, if you were... Did you know Del Toro Quest, the American book series, where a kid goes around and collects gemstones for a belt... By defeating terrifying creatures in their natural habitats became an anime because I didn't until the hub aired it <laughs> and it was really good actually it was faithful to the books which I only ever read one of those books over and over and over and over again why? 
because it was Ruby. And I love rubies because July but yes Del Toro Quest is an anime that exists and is actually really good they use a 3D techniques so at times the monsters are the, all of the monster enemies that they had to fight are 3D enemies which is something that I wasn't expecting to see from a show that used to be Discovery Kids. This is also around the time they were airing My My Little Pony. And technically that's what I was on the hub for. Because I wanted to see that reboot. Reimagining. Re-whatevering that it was on. I never got super into it. But I did get super into Del Toro Quest. Which I was not expecting. Yes, I tried to watch Transformers Prime, mainly because, I'll be honest, I think Transformers are neat, but I can't get into them at all. Possibly because, like Digimon, I don't know how they work. And Digimon is... Digimon took me forever to understand. And I still only have the barest grasp of it now. But I'm pretty sure that Digimon are only a metaphor for growing up. They are meant to be a child growing from childish thoughts into a child growing into more adult thoughts. They're a metaphor for growing up. But if you want to explain to me what Transformers is about, I would love to hear it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's more to it than that in Coop. Because if it was just that, I'd understand it easier and have an easier time of getting into it. That's the truth. That's what Power Rangers is. I'm pretty sure there's an epic debate of morality and what is good and what is bad. And how do you define it and why is it this and why is that that? Because I've seen, I've seen the comics, Coop. Yes, I only understand that part. <laughs> There's lore, but we're easing into it. Yes. Yes. But you have to tell me your core theme or else I don't understand and I can't get into it. That's why I love Digimon so much, but I couldn't get into it. I had to have... I couldn't figure out how to design for them. Which was very frustrating for me as an artist because I wanted to design my own. But I couldn't design my own until I understood that... Oh... They're just a metaphor for growing up. That is literally all they are. They're a kid's mentality becoming an adult's mentality. And that's what the Digivolutions are. They're conflicts that arise from within the child's psyche. That they overcome themselves. They're also an excellent best friend for forever and ever and ever and always. All right, now we got all of this lined out. It's time to color.
<laughs> hey. Hey. Don't talk that way about my friend. Don't do it. That I can understand. I can understand. Ooh, cool robots. That's how I felt with Digimon for the longest time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm guessing you're talking about Transformers again, but I, I'm over here going, ah, yes. She's going to go watch Captain Planet now. <laughs> yeah. I completely agree with you. There's just there's a lot of weirdness with Netflix, especially with their own original shows that they did. There's I've seen so much about how they're just like Okay, I'll be honest, I tried to get into Ninja Turtles and I got into the 2012 series, but I haven't been able to get into any other series after that. I know that's on me. I know that's on me. I know that there's more turtle shows and I know they've crossed over multiple times with Power Rangers. And I love Power Rangers, but I can't get into turtles. <laughs> I've heard lots of good things about Rise. I know nothing of their lore, Cassie. I only know about the toys that made us. The toys that made us might be a great jumping off point for the fact that they were a Daredevil spin-off series that was just, it was a spoof series for Daredevil. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> Uh, what's your guys' favorite theme show like theme song for TV like what ones have you memorized completely and utterly I can sing just about any of the Disney era Power Rangers songs yeah I know you you and your space brothers they're brothers in space. Alright, looks like I need to fix that line somewhere here. Where, 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 there. And next to it. I'm intrigued, Coop, because I don't know if I've ever heard that theme song. Yep, yeah. of course I did that wrong. Ah, <laughs> uh, I see. <laughs> um, you're saying this to a person who unironically has like a playlist full of Life House and, uh. <laughs> 
three doors down and <laughs> yeah you're you're fine that sounds like i would like it quite a bit like no joke <laughs> that sounds like something i would enjoy completely unironically just as music <laughs> No, no, I don't, Cassie. I keep saying that. Fairy. I don't like Nickelback. I had like one song on there on my playlists. And then I got tired of it. It's Lifehouse. Lifehouse sounds sort of like Nickelback, except their, their, their lyrics are so positive, even though it's angsty rock. All right, now what was I doing? Right. Turning off the lines for both of those. We're going back to this one. And we're inverting the colors. Which, of course, gives me a really edgy looking character right there. And then we go up. And we're doing specifically the layers of the halo like they have here. Which means we're going to start with this color. Nice. I am extremely eclectic in my tastes. Much like my 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 entire family, we we watch what we like, and then we try and find more like it, and then we end up finding things that are completely different, but that we like just as much. And then there are things that you'd think we'd like, right? You'd think we'd like them, but we don't. Like. I know I've mentioned my love of time travel. Uh, time Warp Trio is a book series and a TV series that is a magic book that takes you through time. It's excellent. It's really, really, really good. It's also not something you can replicate in any way, shape, or form. Like, you could try and tell me there's another show similar to it, but it's just not going to be the same. It's not Time Warp Trio. That's not, it's not how this works, you see? The show itself is really cute. It's silly, it's goofy. They meet their own descendants who are like exact opposites of them. It's got a, a really fun premise. Ah, that would be why it's bad. Got it, got it, got it. It's got a really fun premise because it's just uh a kid's take on time travel. There's no consequences because they're going back and doing things that have already happened, but they're definitely basing it in the thought of time travel as a sort of collectivist thought pattern. It's sort of... There's different schools of thought in time travel. And my personal favorite is the... Everything that's happened... Has already happened. And... Even if you went back in time... It's already happened. 
it's already been done. Things have already, you've already influenced this chain of events. You're being sent back because you, you have to influence this chain of events. That's part of the history of the world itself. That's important. You're important. But that's just my personal favorite. There's a bunch of different philosophies on time travel that all, almost all of which I agree. You just have to tell me straight up what time travel you're going with. And then I'll be like, okay, I can suspend my disbelief. This may not be my favorite version of time travel, but it's the version they're going with. So I guess, I guess I'll go with that. What's your favorite version of time travel? Do you like the time travel where they completely uh goodness have an alternate timeline created from their actions or do you like the time travel where their actions are already predetermined or do you like the time travel that I haven't mentioned. There's several that I haven't mentioned. I love these types of getting to know you games because nobody asks questions like this, but they should because these are the important questions. This is how you determine whether your tastes match or how you can recommend media to people. Like, I've watched Looper that <laughs> unfortunately Coop that means you don't really like a whole lot of time travel because a lot of them is thinking <laughs> time travel involves math <laughs> timeline math darn <laughs> but <laughs> it's safe to say that hand wavy stuff like that like they time traveled because they could thought process is actually a fairly good one I enjoy that one quite a bit as well just because of how just silly it is so I I love almost all time travel, if you can't tell. <laughs> but one of my personal favorites is when they don't really know they've time traveled. I'm also a pretty big fan of going back in time for a purpose. If you can hand wavy the science behind it and make it fun, then I'm not going to get on to you about it. Because that's what time travel is supposed to be for me. It's supposed to be fun. If it's not fun, then what's the point? Alright, now I just got to make sure that I get this part up here, because I didn't do the eyes and I need to go back and do those too.
And then, then we'll be cooking with gas and I can start doing the final touches on this particular piece. I'm going to have to be really careful with it, which is fine. Yes, stuff like that. Okay. Then we simply merge the colored layers together. Be careful not to move that layer. Merge this layer down here, this particular one. This one's our shadow layer, so we need it to be... We need it to be different. And then we do, I believe, I wanted to do... Nope, nope, wrong color. Uh, I'm on the wrong stage. <laughs> this one is the one that I wanted to see. I guess we'll have to see. Mainly because I don't want it to be too visible. I just want it to make it stand out from the white. That way when I turn this on, you can see the feathers. At least faintly in the wing where I drew them in white. But it looks like it's really hard to tell, so. Let me turn that back up a little bit. Take that number, which is 55. Do the same for down here. All right. Yeah. yeah. Turn back on the flowers. And we go to this layer, we take our eraser and make it small. So I think, I think this is too much color here. Then I can work on doing some of the skin stuff. Almost done. Skin and hair is next, I think. Because the hair is white, I do need to add stuff to it.
All right. Am I back on? Voice, voice. Am I hearable? Okay. Yep. Seems like I was talking to myself again. Completely muted. <laughs> this button. This button. So useful. At completely silencing me. <laughs> this one button. <laughs> the king of buttons. The most powerful button in the world. But yes. I was talking about how with uh, anything that's not from the States, you have to keep in mind that it's completely following a different set of cultural rules, and that's what most people forget when it comes to, like, anime and stuff that's from other places, is that they're expecting it to be from their own perspective when it's completely different. But, yeah. That's just my two cents on the matter. Let's see. Turn off the creature. Turn off the picture. Turn off the that. Yeah. I think that's a that's a pretty good done photograph. Let's background color and make it like blue, blue sky. Maybe a little bit darker, darker blue, just to make it stand out a little bit better. Yeah. Perhaps one more thing, just to merge those colored layers together, just for my own purposes here. Take my selection tool, take, take this perfectly, copy and paste it, now we have this. Take my automatic, invert it, make it all white. Put it under this, so like this one. Make it slightly bigger. Fuzzy and blur it to give the halo a glowy effect. And you can merge that down, and now you have a glowy halo. I think that I'm done. I think that I like this. Which, of course, means I go back to my gallery and I. I pull up another piece that I'm particularly proud of because it makes me happy. <laughs> it was for Coop's birthday. I enjoyed doing all the Pokemon in here. It was very fun. Anyway, I think I'm going to turn off the the image here. So that we can just not worry about it. Nope. So that's that's my art. <laughs> uh if there's anything else let's see I'm pretty good that's 1214 initially this is supposed to be like a
uh, one and a half hour stream. Seems like this is good. Seems like it's a good place to end. All right. I think... <sighs> think I'm good for now. See you all next Tuesday. Or maybe sooner. If my desk gets here. Maybe I'll do a board game stream and we'll... We'll play one of the crazy board games that I have in the house. That we have, my family has in the house. So, until next time. Thanks for traversing space with me, you guys. Spending some time in my orbit. Bye!